Hey, everybody. Good morning. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is time for our daily devotion, and I'm back. So I uh, just thought we'd uh, take an opportunity here for us to have some devotion time. It's great to see all of you. Um, hopefully, we'll have some folks that will sign in here in a second and let us know that they're present. But uh, we're going to take a time to have some devotion today um, after my 12 or 13 days off. Uh, it's been a wonderful vacation, but uh, we're going to get back at it and have some devotion time today. So looking forward to seeing the folks that uh, join me here. I'll take a couple minutes and just wait for folks, and then we'll get started with our devotion. If you sign in, let me know. Um, leave a comment. Let me know that you're here. That would be great to, to know that. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Hey, Linda. Yep, I made it back. I apologize for my looks. I've been out power washing, so one of the duties of borrowing my sister-in-law's trailer is to make sure to uh, put it away clean. So we've, I've been out power washing the outside of it this morning, trying to get all the bugs and different, you know, grove grime and all that kind of stuff off of it. So uh, I apologize. I'm a little, little haggard this morning, but hey, Jack. Thank you. That, that's the second time Jack Dunbar's had the opportunity to welcome me home. We saw each other yesterday as I was parking the vehicle and doing some maintenance on it. So We're going to be reading out of John chapter 17. Yes, Linda, feeling refreshed and renewed. Hey, thanks for asking that question. And I appreciate being missed. <laughs> Shirley, thank you very much. Yeah, welcome back to the real world. Well, we saw parts of the real world, just not parts that looked like Missouri. So we uh, we did South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota. You know, you travel through Iowa. Iowa is Iowa. But we saw we saw a lot. Had a long list of things that we. Uh, Got an opportunity to visit and see and take our grandsons to go see as well. So it's a good trip. As I mentioned, we're going to read from John chapter 17, verses 1 to 8. So if you want to find that. Let's go ahead and get started. John chapter 17, verses 1 to 8. And here is what it says. When Jesus finished saying these things, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so that the son can glorify you. You gave him authority over everything so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. This is eternal life to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I shared with you before the world was created. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. This is because I gave them the words that you gave me, and they received them. They truly understood that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Our devotion is written by Dusty Reed, who is from Iowa, which I just mentioned a moment ago. So uh, his focus verse was from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Out of the New Revised Standard Version, it reads, it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our hearts as a first installment. And here is the devotion that Dusty offers for us today. As a part of a prayer chain at our church, I delighted in the opportunity to pray for others. I was able to grow spiritually and offer God's love to others. Whenever I receive a call, I would immediately step into my quiet space with Bible in hand. The Lord would, address, would direct me to an appropriate scripture. Then I prayed the scripture for the person requesting the prayer. I did not, ha know, I did not have to know any details. I did not have to learn the results. My task was simply to lift a person through God's words and God's promises. When we moved to a new location, I lost my connection with the prayer chain. 
but the Lord gave me a new source for knowing whom to pray for. Now my friends request prayer through social media, sometimes for themselves and sometimes for loved ones. Through this experience, I am learning how to pray more effectively in my daily quiet time. I can listen for the nudge of an appropriate scripture in any situation, pray that scripture, and then leave all in the loving hands of God. What a delight. So the thought for the day is, for whom can I pray? I'm hoping um, that many of you were praying while I was gone um, and praying that, you know, that uh, we have a safe trip um, and that we uh, come back safely and that, you know, as Linda said, you know, there might be some renewal and refreshing, which certainly uh, occurred for us as we got a chance to see a lot of different things. We were praying for you while we were gone. Um, I was praying that many of you were able through Jessica reposting some of the reruns of our daily devotions, still had that time uh, to spend in devotion. I was praying that you as a church were also living into your vision and your call to be God's people, engaging others through Jesus Christ, that you were still living into all the ministries, um, because those things are not dependent upon me being around. I know they are part of your heart and your work. And so I was praying that all of those things just continued in the name of Christ. I think um, each of us hopefully found some time while we were gone to read some scripture, meditate on what God's handiwork looks like. Uh, we certainly had that opportunity. Uh, took our grandsons to parts of the country that they'd never seen before. So in South Dakota, they'd never seen the Badlands. They'd never been on Needles Highway in Custer State Park. They had never seen Mount Rushmore or Crazy Horse and for them to be able to walk the trail and visit it. Uh, to take them out to Old Faithful and Yellowstone and, and sit around for 45 minutes waiting for the time to come when Old Faithful might blow, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but Or to take them into Glacier National Park and let them see the one of you know, the 26 remaining glaciers up there and how they're receding for just from, you know, the changing in climate and temperature and those kinds of things. We got a chance to see the scripture unfold before us as we saw different parts of our country and the landscape around it. I'm hoping you saw some different things, so, you know, that might be a, an image and a picture of creation and scripture for you in the last couple of weeks. And then it caused you to pause and to pray and to think. I hope that, that one thing comes out each and every day for all of us is, is that we pause and we pray and we thank God for the blessings in our lives. You know, it's especially in this time, you know, that that so far, you know, almost all of us remain healthy um, and that we are, you know, abiding by and trying to figure out how to make sure to keep our social distance and our health and all those things. We're protecting them that, that we should count that as a blessing as a congregation, as individuals that we keep in touch with one another through these mechanisms. You know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, so many of you come and, and join us for daily devotions and the other things that we're doing as well. I'm thankful that we have technology that allows us to be able to put together our, our worship services and, and to post those so that you can participate in worship the last two Sundays, um, even though they were canned per se. I'm glad that we can do that and to give thanks to God for these many wonderful things around us. I think we need to be more thankful today, um, when, especially in a time when we could certainly be um, more anxious and stressed. If we could just pause a little bit, take a deep breath for a second, and just give thanks for all that God has given to you. I certainly give thanks to God for all of you, for your friendship, for you being a part of the ministry that we are in and the community we are a part of. I give thanks for your faithfulness and your love. But I give thanks to God for the blessing of each one of you. And I hope that you do the same for each other as part of your community and for those that are beyond it as well. Because I think we need to take time, each and every one of us, when we're nudged by the power of the Spirit to just pause to pray, to give thanks for the blessings in our lives. So what are you praying for today? Or whom can you pray for today? 
And how can you give thanks for the blessings that God has bestowed upon you? Let's take a moment to pause and to pray as we close our devotion time today. Thank you, loving God, for giving us the opportunity to pray for others. We ask that you hear and answer each one of those prayers. Thank you for showing us through your scripture and through your creation, your wonderful, loving handiwork. May we always give thanks for the blessings in our lives. And these are our prayers today in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow again at 1145. Uh, we'll have our time of devotion. Uh, I am going to try to play golf Friday morning, um, hang out with my friends a little bit. That's kind of my decompression from 4,000 and almost 100 miles of driving over the last 12 days. So, um, But uh, we'll be on on Friday as well and then back on our regular time on Saturday. So I hope you'll come and join me. Uh, take time today to count your blessings and pray over them. Give God thanks for them. Take time to pray for somebody today as well. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day.